Greetings and welcome to part two of our chord tone study. And before I dive in and start to add stuff to the plate, I'm going to encourage you to join me in omitting stuff, which is basically giving ourselves permission to leave space. Now, elsewhere on the channel, you'll notice that I'm demonstrating a lot of stuff and a lot of my demonstration can be rather noty and busy. And that's a tendency that we all tend to have when we're on our own in a practice room, to be filling up the space with stuff, with new things, new ideas. And that's because most of our study is sort of harmonic and melodic based. We don't always tend to practice rhythms. Now, it's much easier when we're playing with other people especially with a rhythm section, to leave space because it's a natural tendency for many of us to give room to other people. We're having a conversation, we're having a musical conversation with others, and so we want to stop, leave space, and give others a chance to express themselves as well. But we can practice this in our practice room as well. So that's where we're going to start today. I wanted to start of the idea of leaving space in the simplest manner I could possibly think of. The simplest thing I can think of is to, we'll take the roots and we'll play a bar and omit a bar. Simple as that. couldn't get much simpler than that, but it does a couple of things. It obviously encourages you to actually leave a space, but the other thing that it does is it encourages you to think ahead to where the next chord is going. And by stopping for a minute, it gives you time to think of something to play, and it also gives your listener, when you're playing in, in a real playing situation, also time to process what you've been playing and to join you on the melodic ride. So the next simplest thing that I could come up with is the opposite of that, is to leave a bar and then play. Now, I just chose the roots on that simple exercise. I could choose different chord tones. I could go and do all of the thirds, all the fifths, or all the sevenths. But I could also just decide what chord tone I'm going to play as I go. Let's try a, a version of mixing and matching. So I'll play and rest. <laughs> So you can see that even in this very simplistic way of practicing leaving space, you can be very creative. You can bring your creative ideas. It might be that you want the line to slowly climb up or descend, or you want it to sort of be very angular, and you know maybe you want to do different, uh, play different parts of, of the instrument, different ranges of the instrument. Now in the next sort of exciting development of this simple way of leaving space is to choose, be creative in your choice of when you play, how much space you leave, and what notes you're going to play. So I might choose to play and then leave a bar. Then I might switch it around and leave a bar and play. Or I might be more random in my choices of where I leave space. Anyway, I'm going to play and 
just leave space. And my only real stricture is that I just play a whole note and, you know, leave some space. Let's see what happens. Another interesting thing came about when I did that and I hope you've been doing this with me but because I was leaving space and choosing where I was going to play I had to really be very aware of the song form on this because you know there's there's a lot of kind of repeated sections if you will and if you do this kind of thing often enough like this kind of idea of leaving space it really helps you keep your place in the form of the song. Obviously doing chord tones on every bar and every beat and all of that, all the things that we've been doing so far, yes, it does help you with keeping your place in the form. But this idea of leaving space gives your brain an added challenge. Now we could take the ideas from episode one where we were delaying and anticipating and add it to this space mix. Let's try with a delay first. So I'm going to play a bar and skip a bar, but I'm going to delay that note. And let me anticipate, I'll start on the end of beat four, anticipating into the chord chain. Now, if we were playing this at a, a much faster tempo, you would probably naturally leave more space. But if you are intimidated perhaps with faster tempos, no matter what level you are, I would suggest trying this out on some faster tempos. Try this at a much faster tempo.
not sure whether you noticed, but on that much faster tempo, when I was telling myself to leave some space, I left more space. I let more bars go with uh, no notes in them. So, Another thing about leaving space in this kind of manner, especially when you leave whole bars alone to themselves, and especially if you have a rhythm section, or you know, in this case, I know it was a play along track, which can be a bit metronomic and you know, robotic, but when you stop and leave space, it actually encourages you in this case the horn player um, you know and I, it could be the pianist or the bass player playing a solo or whatever whoever's playing a solo when they leave space it allows them I feel to get in touch with the groove it turns you from just a player into a player who's listening as well that's another important point about leaving space it allows you to feel the groove Anyway, I know it sounds like a, a simple exercise to do, but I'm hoping that this kind of helps you with giving yourself permission, even on your own in the practice room, albeit with a uh, play-along track, to don't feel you have to fill up the space so much. And this is an instruction that I'm giving myself as well. Okay, so we'll move on and... We'll go back to filling up a little bit more space. 